it feels weird, awkward and almost taboo really to be sat here trying to talk about love like this. I mean it feels very strange to be honest to be sat here trying to talk into thin air at all. Usually when I'm talking I'm doing something with my hands or chilling out with friends or I'm quite drunk or on something else that helps the words flow and here I am stone cold sober on a Sunday afternoon doing this because I wanted some words about love to accompany what I did here. I wish I was doing this at 2am last night. If there was any justice in the world, I'd be a proper artist living in a beautiful little garrison somewhere at the top of an old drafty damp building. And when I have these thoughts at 2am and they just seem to make so much sense and flow out of my brain, I would be able to sit down and just chat them out, express them to thin air and record them down. But right now I'm I'm lucky enough to be living with family and they very unreasonably expect to be able to sleep at night without hearing the chittering sounds of random acts of creativity. And so every day, I, every day for the past week really, I've been wanting to do this and unable to do it because I just, I can't get these words out when I'm not on the edge of being awake. Maybe that's because in some way it's painful to think about. It's it's a strange and an awkward thing and maybe it's it's just pure lack of self-confidence, this idea that it's stupid for me to sit down and talk. And I think when we make things, we do tend to focus on this, this belief that there's no point in doing it, that other people are doing it better, that no one will want our finished product. Even in this age of democratic creation, and I think that's really what we in what we are in nowadays. Everyone can make and everyone can share what they make with the world. So I don't understand how I can I can see that video after video exists that I think are really not that great. And yet I still hesitate to make things. I still think mine will be worse. I'm here monologuing about love because I wanted some words to accompaniment this video I did. And the things I did in it which were ultimately an act of that, an act of love. And I felt maybe we need some words to go with this. I tried to prepare by looking up some instructions on how to monologue and just found video after video suggesting how I can improve my audition for acting jobs and drama school, which isn't what I'm going for. So then I tried looking up how to do a video essay, and it seems like that's not right for me either. I'm not arguing one way or the other. I don't really have any deep revelations to share with you. So some might ask why even do this then? Why are you having this conversation? Who is this talking for? Or do you just love the sound of your own voice? Which is something I've heard a few times in my life and I have to say it's not quite true. But I know there's someone out there, well at least one person who does love the sound of my voice because they've told me And they tell me every time I upload a new video with talking in that they love listening to me. So maybe this is for them. Maybe this is an act of love for them. It's springtime. Actually, today is the spring equinox. So it's really the start of springtime in the UK. It's the 21st of March. And it's a very strange time for me. I love spring, I love planting seeds and I love daffodils and bluebells and foxgloves and of course all the little baby animals and all of this shit and Easter chocolate and longer days and blossom on the trees. But this year it's quite painful because it's it's the one year anniversary of me having to leave Japan. 
And so I want to go into this spring compassionately. I want to go into this spring with compassion for myself and for my friends and make sure everyone who's in my life at the moment realises how cherished they are. This isn't the first time I've sent eggs to someone. Um, It's the second, actually. And my own chickens came from post eggs. You can you can go on eBay and buy fertilized eggs and then incubate them at home in an incubator and get chicks. And that's what I did last year when I was killing time. I was sitting around between between having to leave Japan and getting the email that I didn't have a job to go back to in Japan, which was between early March and July I bought some eggs and I incubated them and I hatched chicks out and four of those chicks out of the eight um, four of them now live with me here at my parents house and have become part of the family and so as spring has come and the days are getting longer and the girls are getting more sun we're up to between three and four eggs a day so we're kind of drowning in eggs a little bit so I thought I'll I'll send some eggs the the last person I sent eggs to was the person I was living with in Wales when I hatched my chickens so I sent him two boxes of eggs to kind of say thank you for having us thank you for letting me be in this space with my chickens last year when they were just itty bitty baby chicks and They were a worry and concern for everyone and our cat nearly ate some of them, but he didn't. But this time around, I I wanted to send eggs to someone else and I wanted to say thank you to a friend who had sent me flowers because of a COVID test result that I had got that ended up being being a false positive, but I I had got this COVID test result and so had to self-isolate for a couple of days before I got an official government test, which came back as negative. And they sent me flowers because they knew I would be shut in my room and they know I love nature and I love flowers. And this is, this is not the first time I've had flowers from this friend. When I had my laser eye surgery, they sent me flowers as well to my work that said a sight for sore eyes on them, which I thought was fantastic. And that's really their love language, I guess. This year really has shown people that you can't take anything for granted. Everything we love, to some extent, has been impacted by this past year, by this pandemic. And for some of us, I imagine it's been incredibly big, the impact. Some people have lost multiple loved ones to COVID or to factors coming from COVID. There's been rises in suicides, for example, in some countries. Other people have simply lost things like their ability to roam, to change country, to travel, to see the world. Some people like me have lost jobs. We've lost visas and and homes in some ways. And other people have lost connections with people around them. If the only people you ever saw were at school or work and then school and work's changed completely, I guess you've lost that too. So I wanted to show my appreciation for people I love in small acts like this. It's quite silly in a way, you know, you think, oh, you're going to send me eggs in the post. I could go to a supermarket and I could get a dozen eggs for about two quid. And so could anyone who I'm sending eggs to, you know. It's not like they're living on some bizarre remote island and have to get all their eggs shipped in. And so some might say, what's the point? It's not You're not even sending anyone a baked good, you're just sending them eggs. And I could I could take the the line of, oh, well, these are not just any eggs, these are my 
gorgeous, free-range, happy chicken eggs. And I think that's there's a truth to that. My eggs are better. I've tested them side by side with organic eggs from Abel and Cole. I've checked the colour of the yolk and how they cook and everything. And I do think fresh ones from my girls are better. But that's not the point. It's not it's not so much about the eggs and it's not about the art. It's not about me painting chickens on egg boxes. Although it is about that as well. <laughs> It's about the time and the skill and sitting down to do it, making time to do it. Not that I am a person who doesn't have much time at the moment. I am pretty much made of time compared to a lot of the world. But in as much as I hate this cliched, stupid sentimentality, it is the thought that counts. It's about saying, you matter to me. And you matter so much that I'm going to take time to paint a chicken on an egg box for you and pick out my prettiest eggs for you and pack them with love and care and with some rhubarb, with the ribbon from the flowers that you sent me tied round it and put it all in a box and send it to you with flowers picked from my garden because I love you and it might not be that romantic partnership love but it is love and I I wish we could all express that better with each other because otherwise what's what's the point <laughs> I still just don't understand why this is so hard to sit here and talk like this and I hope it just comes down to practice because these kind of videos I wouldn't mind making more of them where you have some shots of me working and then I talk about a certain subject but when it's something so serious like this and I'm trying to be earnest I just find it such a challenge and I think I I'm not entirely sure why that is. Maybe it's just because I'm not a very serious person. So I come out here, guns blazing, trying to shoot off something about love, and instead just pond water falls out of my pistols. <laughs> but that's kind of also the beauty of making these videos at this stage in my life. It's it's wonderful to be a beginner because you can be experimental and you can fuck up and you're not really beholden to anyone. As I as I make this, I have 74 subscribers, which means that I've probably only got about 25, maybe 30 active viewers. So it doesn't really matter if these videos are strange and don't work and don't make sense and they don't turn into these heartfelt masterpieces that go down through the ages no it doesn't and that's wonderful that's freeing there's a there's a freedom in that I wanted to make something touching <laughs> but I don't have practice doing those and I, I don't I don't know where to begin with that so why why would I feel that I was able to do that right off the bat this experience, this past year has been really humbling. Actually, the past two years of my life have been incredibly humbling experiences. All that time spent traveling, learning what it's what it's like to be somewhere where you don't speak the language and are trying to make things work. And then having everything flipped upside down, having to, to leave that, lose my job, leave Japan and come back to the UK and trying to make it work again as an artist and everything that's entailed. And then I found myself here now doing YouTube videos, which isn't really something I ever thought I would I would actually do. And it's stretching myself in so many different ways, learning about camera angles. I look at the camera angles in this video and they're they're really bad, you know, you can't see me painting because my hand is in the way. So that's something to work at. And I've had to learn to edit 
and today I'm learning to edit audio properly. I've finally downloaded Audacity and I'm using my microphone which a friend sent me. Another act of love. <laughs> this monologue hasn't really turned out how I hoped it would. I haven't sat down here and spewed out this beautiful, poetic quarter of an hour of dialogue where I unlock the deep, secret mysteries of platonic love and what it means to show you care about a friend. I've mainly just sat here warbling and wondering and going, ooh, my life and ooh, the difficulties of 2020. But I guess it has also been cathartic. I haven't been able to for several months now sit down with a friend and a drink and actually get this stuff out of me and make these connections. So instead I'm doing it here and I'm doing it with this microphone and hoping that it makes sense to the people listening. It's not easy to put yourself out there, even when you are just on a small stage and waving your arms up and down, and even when you know it's all completely voluntary, and that nobody's actually really stood up and asked you to do it. It's still quite hard, but it's something I want to do. I want to, I want to feel like I have this outlet to be creative in other ways. Over the years, so many people have told me that they like my writing and it's something I just don't get down to doing. I don't make the time to sit down and write things out as much as I would like to. And I think, again, there's a sense of fear there. So maybe if I can remove that barrier of having to actually type it out and I just let it flow out of me here and edit that down, I can be writing that way instead. I don't know. I know this this year I'm really going to try and practice being compassionate to myself and being compassionate to the people in my life and seeing what that actually results in, seeing how much impact the little things can have. I talk about sending things. I've received a few things this year from other people as well. Uh, the microphone I'm talking on now that I mentioned a little while ago and seeds from a few friends as well. I want to do a video about seed saving actually with, a, with another monologue. And what struck me each time was the little details that they left me in those packages the letter with the seeds had absolutely beautiful calligraphic handwriting it was like a wedding invitation and there was a little note in with the microphone as well and i'm not going to i'm not going to share what it said now but i might in the future i might show it off and it just reminds you really these little moments that you have they do make a little echo in the universe and they do mean something to the people on the other end and so let's let's take that with us over the next 12 months let's take that away as a lesson that we can fill the world with little acts of love and i hope that helps make things better